Hello and welcome to Brightline Orlando. Today we're riding on Brightline's inaugural train from Orlando International Airport to Miami Central Station. Our journey begins at Orlando International Airport's Intermodal Terminal. Opened in 2017, the Intermodal Center was designed as the northern terminus for the Florida High Speed Railway, a project that fell through in 2011. Brightline took up the torch soon thereafter, building the surrounding infrastructure and eventually taking up residence in the Intermodal Terminal. Orlando's Intermodal Terminal serves the newly opened Terminal C, Terminals A and B via the People Mover, and as of today, Brightline. Orlando's local commuter line Sunrail will also join the ranks in the near future. The airport itself is just as excited as Brightline for service to begin, the airport sending out a welcome committee to hand out airport swag to arriving passengers. Free for the taking are a selection of pens, magnets, pins, bag tags, shoe and laundry bags, water bottles, and airport branded cookies. More and more passengers, news crews, and fellow content creators begin congregating around the station entrance. As much as we want to get inside, we all have to wait until 5.38 or an hour before departure before the station officially opens. In front of the station entrance is the check-in desk for media and VIP passengers, with only those lucky few allowed inside early. Fortunately, we don't have to wait too long as Brightline welcomes us all inside. We're first in line at the ticket barriers, and scanning through, we become the first revenue passenger ever to enter Brightline's Orlando station. Here we go. Day one, first passenger. Here we go. First set of revenue service passenger. Scanned in. We then put our bags through an x-ray machine, a part of Brightline's security protocols. Now inside, we can take a look at Brightline's brand new Orlando station. Front and center is Market, a grab-and-go convenience store with anything you could need for a day's travels and plenty of Brightline and Florida-based merch. Behind that is the Merry Merry Bar, which serves passengers a variety of alcoholic beverages and light food options. Lounges are included for both smart and premium class passengers. The smart lounge is located on the left upon entering the station, with the premium lounge on the right. The smart lounge includes plenty of comfortable seats with outlets for improved connectivity throughout. Premium class passengers are treated to a more exclusive experience. As with all lounges in Brightline's network, passengers must scan through an additional set of barriers to be granted entry. Brightline is known for quality, and the Premium Lounge is no exception. On the western wall is a self-service bar with alcoholic beverages, a full suite of breakfast items to snack on, a coffee machine, and a refrigerator stocked with sodas and water. The station amenities are great, but what we're really here for is below us, the tracks and soon-to-be-arriving inaugural train. Brightline Orlando currently consists of two tracks in the center of the station, with space for a third to be installed later on the western side of the station. Passengers can access the tracks from one of two sets of escalators at each end of the station or through the elevators in the center. While we wait for boarding to begin, I just want to take a second to thank none other than Brightline. Brightline invited me to be a part of launch day for the Orlando services and more importantly, to share the experience with all of you. I guess that means I also owe all of y'all a thank you too for supporting my content and allowing this to become a reality. The excitement throughout the station continues to build, and soon from below us comes the inaugural train, Brightline's Bright Orange 2. As the news media do their thing, people begin to line up by the escalators in preparation for boarding. The barriers are soon removed and we can head down to track level for this momentous occasion. 
Taking us down to Miami this morning is Bright Orange 2, Brightline's newest train. In addition to building tracks up to Orlando, Brightline purchased five new venture train sets, the last of which to be delivered was this one here in February of 2023. In March of this year, Brightline ordered five more four-car sets, which would allow them to run eight or even ten-car trains between Orlando and Miami. This foresight of longer trains is seen in the disproportionately long platforms across the network. Leading the charge down to Miami today is Siemens Charger SCB40 locomotive number 118. I know I've raved about the Charger family of locomotives in the past, specifically the Amtrak ALC42 and VIA SCB42, but the Brightline spec is by far the best looking. Their sleek figure, rounded nose with covered couplings, and aggressive eyes make these some of the best looking locomotives operating in the US today. And that Brightline paint job just looks incredible. Really, they're second to none. Of course, I would love to stay and appreciate these locomotives all day, but today isn't about them. No, today is about getting to Miami, so it's time to climb aboard. As if assigned to all onlookers, the open doors meet the text behind them perfectly, letting everyone know that Brightline is here. And it is. Brightline is here for Orlando, here for Florida, and here for all rail travel in the United States. We'll be traveling today in premium class, compliments of Brightline. Stepping inside Coach 1, we can head down the aisle to find seat 4A, our home en route to Miami. Before we head out of Orlando, let's take a look at our route down to Miami. Our journey begins heading north through the Orlando Airport complex, turning east and breaching the 79 mile per hour barrier. The speeds continue to climb, reaching 125 and becoming the first high speed train in the US outside of the Northeast Corridor. Our top speed drops to 110 as we reach Coco and the Space Coast, flying down the East Coast at triple digit speeds. We make our first intermediate stop in West Palm Beach, continuing on at 79 miles per hour through Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, and Aventura before arriving at Brightline's Miami Central Station. We'll cover a total of 240 miles between Orlando and Miami today, with a travel time of 3 hours and 33 minutes. Before we even get moving, the premium service starts. First up is a refreshing cold towel, a nice way to wake myself up after a 4.30 a.m. start. This was soon followed by a warm croissant, a precursor to a more substantial breakfast in a bit. The croissant was buttery, slightly sweet, and definitely delicious, a solid way to start the premium experience. Of course, it wouldn't be a service launch without some form of media shenanigans. Despite the crew making an announcement for media members to detrain, one cameraman ended up stuck on board, which delayed our departure by a few minutes. With the media now actually clear of the train, Bright Orange's doors slide shut, and for the first time ever in revenue service, our train departs Brightline Orlando. Bright Orange snakes its way through the Orlando Airport complex, passing under the many people movers and taxiways Foxtrot, Echo, and Juliet. Our train reaches the curve north of the airport, and we begin our climb towards 125 miles an hour. The tracks over which we now ride are dedicated Brightline right-of-way. The 25-mile line runs from the Florida East Coast Railway on the East Coast to Brightline's Orlando Station, and a bit farther to their base camp maintenance facility. The FRA Class 7 line is entirely grade separated and fenced off, allowing for operational speeds of up to 125 miles an hour. Slowly but surely, the speeds continue to climb, first reaching 80, then 90, and then 100 and beyond. Our engineer keeps the throttle pinned, and our train soon reaches 125 miles an hour. 
Reaching 125 means that Brightline is now the first high-speed train in the United States outside of the Northeast Corridor, and we are among the first passengers to experience it. Let's take a moment to really appreciate this high-speed ride. that stood out most to me while traveling this fast was not the speed, but actually the ride quality. The ride on this line is incredibly smooth and comfortable. Passengers are able to move about the train with ease, and although it might be a little louder than normal, it's still relatively easy to hold a conversation. Highway 528 parallels the high-speed line from Orlando to Coco, our train flying past the early morning commuters. Hopefully those whose final destination is Miami will see our train and think to themselves that they too should take the train. Our train covers the 20 miles of high-speed track in a little over 10 minutes, decelerating to 110 before turning south through Coco to meet up with the tracks of the Florida East Coast Railway. From Cocoa to Miami, Brightline runs on the tracks of the Florida East Coast Railway. The tracks may have already been in place, but upgrades were needed to run at triple-digit speeds. These upgrades included better, continuously welded rails, quad crossing barriers, and rail realignment to conform with FRA standards to name a few. The first drink service comes as we begin our first few miles on the FEC. I went with a cup of coffee and a bottle of water to start my day. And how could I forget the Brightline Orlando inaugural pin handed out by our train attendant? It was at this time that the sun finally began to peek out from behind the clouds, the daylight streaming in through the Venture Coach windows. So how was Brightline able to make Brightline Orlando happen? Well, it starts with owning the freight lines. Fortress Investments, the parent company of Brightline, also owns the Florida East Coast Railway. It's this favorable ownership that allowed Brightline to get up and running in South Florida so quickly. Additionally, Brightline didn't have to fight any major freight railway to allow them to upgrade the tracks from West Palm to Cocoa to Class 6 standards, which allow operating speeds of 110 miles an hour. The limited competition between passenger and freight and the pre-existing right-of-way meant the construction times were cut significantly, with the majority of efforts going into the high-speed line from Orlando to the Space Coast. Even then, the construction on the east-west line was relatively straightforward, as there's practically nothing but swampland between Orlando and Coco. Really, Brightline Orlando and Brightline in general was the perfect storm. A set of cities too far to drive but too close to fly, a compliant freight railway, and a savvy investment group meant Brightline was destined for greatness even from day one. If you're enjoying our ride on Brightline Orlando's inaugural train, why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members. Y'all are amazing and I cannot thank you enough for your incredible support. If you too want your name in the video or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. With our ride now well underway, we can turn our attention back to the Premium Coach for a look at Brightline's Premium Class seating. Premium Class is operated in a 2x1 with plenty of options for solo riders, pairs, and groups of four. Brightline's premium seats are 21 inches wide and include plenty of legroom, with around a foot of space between my knees and the seat in front. There's also ample room beneath the next row to stretch out and really get comfortable. The seat back pocket is made of a large mesh, inside of which is our safety information card and the menu for our ride. The tray table at each seat is divided into two sections. The first is a smaller table which folds down for quick access. The second tray table is much larger, with more than enough space for a laptop or a full meal. Well-padded armrests are found on both sides of every seat. Beneath the center two of our row are two sets of outlets and USB ports. A third set is found beneath the row in front and includes two USB-C ports instead of USB-A. The seat adjustment button is found beneath the outer armrest. 
When pressed, the seat bottom and back slide forward to a comfortable lounging position. Above each row are LED reading lights controlled via machined aluminum buttons. Luggage racks are found above both sides of the train, with a larger rack at the rear of our coach. The seats themselves are quite comfortable. Each seat is hand-sewn, very well cushioned, and includes a winged headrest. With the sun now out in full force, it's getting pretty bright in here. Fortunately, we can mitigate the effects a bit with the blinds found above each window. Our car attendants come back through the coach to serve breakfast. On offer today is a breakfast box, inside of which is a fresh fruit cup, a kind bar, and a strawberry yogurt. The fresh fruit was crisp, fresh, and tasty, and the yogurt and kind bar were what you'd expect, but I couldn't help but think that the whole meal needed a little bit more. Sure, it was nice to be served a breakfast option, but this is premium class, and most passengers paid a lot to be here, so to be served what can only be described as a lackluster selection just doesn't really cut it. I'm hoping this will change moving forward, but we'll have to wait and see. Brightline's fleet of coaches are immaculate. Everything about their interiors exudes a premium feel. Whether it be the high-quality materials, top-notch build quality, incredible lighting, or just the sheer cleanliness of the coaches, you know you're in for an incredible ride when you ride with Brightline. Passenger information is provided through multiple information screens throughout each coach. For this first ride south, the screens only showed the coming stations until we reach West Palm Beach, where they will begin to cycle through advertisements for upcoming events. At the rear of the coach is a single accessible seat for passengers with disabilities. The lighting controls have been moved to the wall for easier access, though there's no table for any passengers sitting here, a feature seen on Via's venture sets that would definitely be a worthwhile investment. Brightline offers free onboard Wi-Fi to all passengers, provided by none other than Starlink. Connecting to the network is quick and easy, and the speeds are staggering. This first test reads an average of 70.21 megabits per second, with subsequent tests resulting in speeds over 100. With this kind of connectivity, passengers have more than enough internet to stream some quality entertainment while they relax at 125 miles an hour. Our run at 110 is put on a brief hiatus as we cross the St. Lucie River. The river crossing is limited to a maximum speed of 25 miles an hour, making it one of the slowest portions of the entire line. The town of Stewart is out in full force for the arrival of Brightline. Our inaugural train receives what has to be one of, if not the first, fire truck salute for a train before passing the ecstatic supporters in a sign welcoming Brightline to Stewart. <laughs> Approaching West Palm Beach, our crew comes back through for the snack service. Offered to premium passengers are a number of options, including chips, cookies, candy, and popcorn. I went with a can of Pringles, a Celsius energy drink, and a bottle of water. Our train continues south, flying down the coast at 110 miles an hour. In addition to premium, Brightline offers a more affordable smart service. Smart Class is very similar to premium, just with 19-inch wide seats operated in a 2x2 instead of 21s in a 2x1. The seats are a little closer together, with about 8 inches between my knees and the seat back. The space beneath the seat, seat back pocket, tray tables, and lights remain the same from premium. Only two sets of outlets are included at each row in Smart, with four conventional sockets, two USB-C ports, and two USB-A ports. The upholstery is also a bit different, with a dark gray main color, a yellow stripe through the center, and a Brightline logo on the headrest. Smart Class may not be the pinnacle of Brightline service, but it's still incredibly comfortable and is easily the more economical way to travel with Brightline. Triple-digit speeds come to an end as we approach our first stop in West Palm Beach.
As we come to a stop, Bright Pink pulls out on the adjacent platform with the inaugural northbound run to Orlando. The door slides away and we can take a moment to grab a breath of fresh air before continuing on to Miami. With service to Orlando now underway, all eyes turn west to Brightline's future projects. In Florida, Brightline is already working to expand from Orlando to Tampa. The route would take riders from Orlando to Disney Springs and Tampa at 110 or 125 miles an hour. On the west coast, it's Brightline West that's taking center stage. Although Brightline Orlando legally meets the requirements for high-speed rail, Brightline West could be the U.S.'s first true high-speed line. The 215-mile rail corridor will connect Las Vegas and Los Angeles at 220 miles an hour, with construction expected to begin later this year. As much of a statement as Brightline was for inner-city rail travel in the U.S., Brightline West will be the same for high-speed rail, and I cannot wait to see progress continue on both the East and West Coast. Bathrooms on Brightline are found at the end of each coach. Pressing the button, the door slides open. A press of the lock button once inside slides the door back shut. As with any Venture train set, the bathrooms are fantastic. All bathrooms on Brightline are accessible facilities and thus offer a ton of space. The automatic sink works well with plenty of soap and a Dyson integrated hand dryer. If the dryer isn't working, paper towels can be found tucked away beneath the mirror. Beneath the counter are two 120-volt outlets, next to which is the motion-activated toilet control and toilet paper. Probably the best part of the bathroom is just how clean it is. Every fixture still has that beautiful metallic luster, and the counter, mirror, and toilet are all free of blemishes. As with all of Brightline's bathrooms, this one is a 10 out of 10. Fort Lauderdale is our next stop, our train skipping Boca Raton en route to Miami. A quick stop later and we continue on. Heading south from Fort Lauderdale, we pass by the Fort Lauderdale Airport, which brings up the biggest question surrounding the Brightline Orlando expansion. Is taking the train better than flying? Most people have commented that Brightline is just as expensive, if not more so than flying between Miami and Orlando, which it isn't. Looking at prices between the two cities, you'll find that one-way flights start at around $100 for economy, whereas Brightline's Smart Class base price is $79 for a one-way fare. Checking luggage brings another level of complication. On American, the main airline offering flights between Miami and Orlando, the first checked bag is $30, which increases to $40 for the second. On Brightline, checked bags are $25 each, though passengers are limited to two per person. Then there's the non-monetary cost, travel time. On paper, it seems like flying is better. It's only an hour from gate to gate versus three and a half on the train. But what everyone seems to forget is all of the pre and post travel time required. The recommendation by most airlines is to arrive two hours before departure versus 30 minutes recommended by Brightline. Adding on that travel time leaves us with three hours by plane and four by train. If you check bags, then you have to wait for those, which adds another 15 minutes. Then after all that, you're still at the airport, so add on another 30 minutes to get to your final destination. Door to door, you end up spending just as much time flying as you do taking the train, and Brightline offers cheaper tickets and a significantly more comfortable experience. So if you ask me, I'll take the train any day. Aventura is our penultimate stop. Opened in December of 2022, Aventura is one of two new stations added to the South Florida section since we last rode. It's another quick stop here, though we're again able to step off the train to at least set foot on one of Brightline's newer stations. 
there's one last question worth addressing before we arrive in Miami, and that is, will Brightline Orlando be a success? In my opinion, it will be, but it'll require a few changes, or mainly additions, before it truly takes off. Of course, there's the time and cost reasons stated earlier for why people should take Brightline, and that in and of itself will be a big draw for passengers. There's also the allure of a fast and efficient inner city rail line with frequent departures to a variety of destinations. What I think really needs to be done for the Orlando expansion to truly work is the construction of new stations. The line passes through many towns for whom a new station would be a great asset. Plus, adding more stations means more connections for coastal commuters, plus destinations for passengers to explore by train. Only time will tell if this investment will pay off, but if their previous success within South Florida is anything to go by, then Orlando should be no different. The skyline of Miami begins to rise above the tree line as we approach the southern terminus. Our train ascends the viaduct towards the city center, bright red passing us as it begins its journey north. Our train slows for the final curves into the platforms before pulling to a stop at Miami Central Station. Grabbing our belongings, we can head off the train for the conclusion of the inaugural Orlando train. Today was incredible. To be a part of railway history here in the United States was an experience unlike anything I've ever done. From being the first passenger into the station to being the first train to reach 125 outside of the Northeast, it was a day of firsts for Brightline, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds for this incredible company. With one final look at locomotives 118 and 110, we can head down into Miami Central Station, where we'll bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be back in Canada for a business class ride with Via Rail from Toronto to Ottawa. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. If you want to go the extra mile with your support, then feel free to check out the channel's Patreon or become a channel member. If you too want your name in the video, access to exclusive weekly posts, and even the opportunity to vote on future videos, then click the links in the top right or in the description below to learn more. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.